God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before your presence this day, giving you praise, adoring your name, O God, for who you are. Lord, we worship and we lift your name on high, for your name is great, O God, and greatly to be praised. We look to you as King and Lord over our lives. We look to you, O God, as Father, as friend, and our brother. We praise your name, O God, for who you are. We praise your name, O God, for the love that you give to us, for the joy we experience in your presence. Lord God, you are our everything. And so, God, we adore you this day. You are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the forest and the last. We worship, we praise you, we bow down before your presence, for you are our everything. Lord, accept the prayer we offer to you at this time. In Jesus' name. Prayer of confession. I invite us in silence to confess our sins to God and to pray for His forgiveness. Loving God, we rejoice in your presence today because you have looked upon us, your unworthy sons and daughters, with favor and are present to forgive, to cleanse to renew, to bless, and to strengthen. We have benefited from your patience and persevering love towards us. Today we acknowledge that we owe you nothing less than our very lives. Forgive us for forgetting this. Forgive us, O oh God, for our folly, our lack of love, our failure to be and to do what you require of us. For your son's sake, be merciful and forgive us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, Hear good news. God has heard our prayers and is true to his promises that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your sins, our sins, are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Prayer of thanksgiving. Join me in the singing of the song, Thanks, Thanks. We give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed, our souls have found rest. Oh Lord, we give you Almighty God, we thank you for your love expressed in Jesus Christ, through whom we have been made your sons and daughters. We thank you that through Jesus you have shown us how to love you and to love others. May we always display true love in what we say and do, thereby living lives that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing the hymn. My song is love on me, yet tonight in all voices in praise. My song is love on Lord, my Savior's love to me, love to the love that showed that day my love will be. Oh, am I that for my sin? My Lord shall take the flesh and
reading verses 1 to 10. Here begins the reading. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in the singing of the hymn, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, 165 in our voices and grace. After which, we invite our preacher for today, Reverend Judy Patterson, Provisional Local Presbyter, to lead us in the Gospel reading, which will be followed by the sermon. serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Let us go to God in prayer as we prepare to hear his word. Heavenly Father, bless thy word unto our hearts and let your name be glorified. We pray, O God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts will be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. Our main text this morning is taken from John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and it states, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The words lifted up used in this text communicates the notion of being exalted or glorified. Jesus was glorified by God when he took our sins upon himself, being that sacrificial lamb once and for all so that salvation is available to all those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This event of Christ being lifted up in the Gospel of John began with Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus. Nicodemus had heard the words, you must be burned from above. But he did not understand or arrive at the point where he can experience and understand spiritual things. As such, Jesus directed Nicodemus to look to him and receive eternal life. Jesus presented himself as the Son of Man who saves and gives salvation to all who believe. Jesus gives new life to all who believe and call upon his name. And having received new life, the believer is required to glorify God in every area of his or her life. Sometimes we find ourselves glorifying God when life seems easy or smooth. But followers of Jesus Christ need to give Christ the glory all the time, especially since we walk in his way. God in his infinite mercy and out of love had given his only son to deliver us and reunite us with the Father. This gospel lesson relates to our Old Testament lesson read earlier where we read that God instructed Moses to mount a, a bronze serpent on a pole and those who looked on it receive deliverance or healing that's numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9 in john's text jesus christ the son of man is likened to that 
of the serpent on the pole. Thus, Jesus became our sin on the cross. The sin we've inherited, the sin we have committed, and the sins we will commit all of it on, on the cross in the person of Jesus Christ. The scripture declares, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteousness of God. Therefore, this act of Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension provides those who believe on Jesus Christ reasons to glorify God in all spheres of their lives. Believers can shout and sing, victory is mine. Amen. The writer showed that the eternal life offered by God in Jesus includes the unending presence of God in and through all circumstances of the believer's life. Firstly, I say to you all, the good news of the gospel is that sacrifice of Jesus' death. It bridged this separation between us and God. We learned that three days after his death, Jesus rose boldly, coming alive again in the physical resurrection. Jesus' sacrifice made it possible for us to receive salvation. The hymn writer declared, Come sinners to the gospel feast. Let every soul be Jesus' guest. You need not one be left behind, for God had bidden all mankind. Sent by my Lord on you I call. The invitation is to all. Come all the world, come sinners thou. All things in Christ are ready now. Jesus bids all to come to him today. Where are you? Are you outside of his fold? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. This is stated in Acts chapter 16, 31. Secondly, followers of Jesus exhibit the fruit of good works. As we glorify Jesus Christ in all areas of our lives, thus we commit to him our time, our talent, our treasures, and God promises that he will reward us. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Ephesians chapter 2, 10. Our good works are necessary expression of gratitude to God for his expression of love in Jesus Christ. We exercise our gratitude by availing ourselves to the means of grace, which includes our prayer and fasting, studying his word, presenting ourselves at the Lord's table for holy communion, as well as displaying our love for God and all humankind, thus demonstrating that we are lifting up the name of Jesus. Glorifying God will enable us to expand the kingdom of God. Believers make Jesus visible by our deliberate proclamation of the gospel, sharing of our testimonies or witnessing for him. In John chapter 12 verse 32 states, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. God desires all people to come to know him personally and to disciple others so that his kingdom can expand and more persons 
be saved. A story was told of a young man who, walking aimlessly, came upon a church and he decided to step in. There were few persons inside, but the preacher's words were clear. He heard just these few words, look to Jesus and live. You may think you are nothing, but look to Jesus. He will make you something. Having heard those few words, the young man was touched. As such, he invited Christ in his life and from then on went on testifying about the goodness of God. A simple message proclaimed, what is your testimony of Jesus and how are you lifting up the name of Jesus? Jesus uses various persons to proclaim his name and he wants to use you. As we continue to journey through life in this Lenten season, and we continue to reflect on Jesus' journey to the cross where he was lifted up and glorified, let us continually be reminded that he's no longer on that cross, but dwells among us and continues to work in and through us. Jesus was the sacrificial lamb slain once and for all. As such, we need no other. Jesus is to be exalted through us as we continually preach and proclaim the good news that though we were yet sinners, he died for us, making him known through our testimonies, our actions, our words reflecting and demonstrating that indeed Christ lives in us. Today, I urge you, let us put aside all other gods. Let us come into his presence and magnify the Lord. Magnify and exalt the name of Jesus together. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Patterson, for that impactful word. And I do hope that we will truly magnify the Lord in all that we do. In response to God's word, join me in singing this song, Majesty, Worship is Majesty. Number 54 in our voices in prayer.
answered by your Holy Spirit that you will help us to keep our eyes fixed on you at all times, whether good or bad, throughout the changing seasons of life. Lord, you know the things that make our hearts feel heavy, encumbered by a load of fear. The issues of life that cause us to go through our Christian walk with anxiety and depression, which at times can cause us to turn from your ways. Father, enable us to continually trust you as we choose to learn from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our church and the MCC. Dear God, we pray for our officers and members of the Connection. We bring before you the Bishop and all other officers of the MCC, the Bishops of all eight districts, our ministers, preachers, pastors, and all other serving in this part of your year. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and grant them wisdom as they serve during this difficult period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, Guyana. Sovereign Lord, you are says that if your people, which are called by your name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and you will forgive their sins and you will heal their land. So Lord, we humble ourselves before you and ask that you forgive the sins of our nation Many times we worship our own gods that we have created, God of wood and of stone, of sex, drug, perks, perversion, and lies. The poor go hungry, the orphan and the widow are not cared for, have mercy on us and blot out our transgression. Loving God, enable our leaders to have hearts of love and care for all people. Watch over our nation and serve all people for good work. Providing God, we have enabled our access to the vaccine against the coronavirus. We pray that this may bring relief to the COVID situation in our nation. Enables its effectiveness in protecting those who receive them. We pray for the vulnerable in society, the elderly, children, and young people of this land and ask that families and agencies provide for the care, love, and security they need so that they can live stable and happy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Bishop T. Kofi and Niles, District President, and the District Staff, I take this opportunity to wish you and your family a holy, peaceful, and reflective Lenten season as well as a blessed week under God's protection and care. We thank you for joining us from your various locations, here as well as overseas. We give God thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and all the special milestones during this week. May God, richest blessing, continue to rest upon you, and in all things, give thanks. Please do join us this afternoon for church school via Zoom, in your various circuits. Bible studies continue on Wednesday via Zoom at 17.30 hours. Continue to pray for and with each other as we ask God's intervention in our time of need. Our closing hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, number 55 in our voices in prayer.
receive the benediction. Go forth, lifting up the name of Jesus, telling the good news of salvation, that his love is available to all who call on him, and that we can hope in him who keeps us from falling. And the blessing of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.